Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ron Swindells. Along with my fellow directors, I welcome you to the 2021 Annual General Meeting of SRA. We acknowledge the First Nation owners of the lands where our stations stand and from which industry members are attending today. We pay respect to their elders, laws, customs and creation spirits. We recognise that, that these lands have always been places of research and learning. For the second consecutive year, this meeting is being held online via the Lumi platform. This allows members, proxies and guests to attend the meeting virtually. All attendees can watch a live webcast of the meeting and in addition, members and proxies have the ability to ask questions and submit votes. Online attendees can submit questions at any time. They can ask a question. To ask a question, simply select the messaging tab at the top of the Lumi platform. At the top of that tab, there is a section for you to type your question. Once you've finished typing, please hit the arrow symbol to send. Please note that while you can submit questions from now on, I will not address them until the relevant time in the meeting. Please also note that your questions may be moderated or if we receive multiple questions on one topic, amalgamated together. For those members who wish to ask a verbal question, an audio question facility is available during this meeting. To use this service, please pause the broadcast on the Lumi platform and then click on the link under Asking Audio Questions. A new page will open where you'll be prompted to enter your name and the topic of your question before being connected. You will listen to the meeting on this page while waiting to ask your question. If you have any issues using this platform, please return to the Lumi platform. Finally, due to time constraints, we may not be able to get to all of your questions today. If this happens, we will answer them in due course via email or posting the responses on our website. Voting today will be conducted by way of a poll on all items of business. In order to provide you with enough time to vote, I will shortly open voting for all resolutions. At that time, if you are eligible to vote at this meeting, a new voting tab will appear. Selecting this tab will bring up a list of resolutions and present you with voting options. To cast your vote, simply select one of the options. There is no need to hit a submit or enter button as the vote is automatically recorded. You do, however, have the ability to change your vote up until the time I declare voting closed. Documents relating to the meeting can be accessed by selecting the documents icon. I now declare voting open on all items of business. The voting tab will soon appear. Please submit your votes at any time. I will give you a warning before I move to close voting. I advise that a quorum for a general meeting of the company is three Group M members and 30 Group G members present in person by member representative, attorney or proxy. I advise that the total number of valid proxies received from Group G members was 37 and the total number of valid proxies received from Group M members was 5. In addition, one Group G member is present here today in person and there are multiple G and M members logged in to this meeting. Therefore, I advise that a quorum is present and formally declare open the 2021 Annual General Meeting of SRA. SRA directors who are logged into this meeting are as follows. Ms Lindy Hyam, Sam Bonanno, Dr Jeremy Burden, Dr Guy Roth and Mr Peter Russo. Our auditor, Ms Kim Collier of BDO, is present online today. Seated with me in, at this meeting, but not on the camera at present, is Ms Ros Baker, the CEO of SRA, and on my right, Mr. Michael Shannon, the company secretary and legal counsel of SRA. Any other apologies, 
I will now make some brief remarks. Just over 10 months have passed since our last AGM. While the price we receive for our current principal product, raw sugar, has improved markedly, the Australian crop has not. And we're still operating in an uncertain COVID environment with labour in short supply in some regions. I compliment our staff and the industry in general on the capable and professional manner in which they have coped with COVID limitations. With three non-Queensland based directors, it is not surprising that COVID has had some impact on the functioning of this board. While meeting via a platform such as Microsoft Teams does enable business to be conducted in an efficient manner, it is not a totally effective substitute for face-to-face -face meetings. Likewise, COVID has led to a curtailment of regional board meetings. And indeed, this meeting was originally scheduled to be held in Mackay. This is disappointing in the extreme and the board looks forward to once again being able to kick the dirt and interact and gather intelligence from our milling and farming stakeholders. At the AGM, Back in 2017, I made mention of our then adoption initiative, which it was hoped would provide a basis for the beginning of a better approach to the objective of improving the communication and uptake of our research and development activities. Our goals were to provide better linkages between SRA and the various other organisations and individuals operating in the sugarcane productivity space and also to provide a vehicle for better integration of regional strategic thinking into the SRA strategic plan. I pointed out then that the proposed adoption model would necessitate an adjustment of the relative proportions of our expenditure on research, development, extension and adoption. I also said that we we're on a journey with adoption and that SRA and the industry would have to carefully navigate our path to deliver the optimum result. It's fair to say that this initial adoption strategy was not as effective as we had hoped it might be for a variety of reasons. However, we learned a lot and some very good work was carried out. For example, Ian McBean and his team, with input from the Regional Adoption Advisory Committees, highlighted the potential gains that could be realised through more effective extension and increased adoption of a number of productivity drivers, such as better use of clean seed, RSD control, weed control, etc. The estimated potential gain for the industry overall was over $100 million. This is a figure that simply cannot be ignored. Consequently, translating research findings into tools, products and services that produce tangible outcomes for our stakeholders is a key strategic pillar in our new strategic plan. SRA is funding this activity. However, as we point out in our strategic plan 2021-26, in order for this to continue and in order to increase the contestable funding pool, we will need to generate sufficient commercial returns and deliver efficiency savings with the lean organisation in the future. As I've written in the annual report for this year, we look forward to the support of all stakeholders to help us achieve our lofty objectives and bridge the innovation gap. The board and management have a number of other initiatives that will need to be analysed and discussed with stakeholders in coming times. These include the better integration of the research funding panel into the operations of SRA and the industry. Relocation from the Indrapilly site. The assessment and potential rationalisation of our property portfolio and infrastructure requirements. The strengthening of our partnerships with our collaborators and investors, including the state and Commonwealth governments. Finally, adding better value to the cradle to grave plant breeding pipeline to ensure the industry extracts maximum benefit from our breeding program. These are significant issues. And this agenda is enough to keep everyone off the streets at night for quite some time. 
I wish the new board and the executive well in their deliberations. On our handover to the SRA CEO, Ms Rosalind Baker, to provide some brief commentary on SRA. Thanks, Ron. Um, on behalf of the executive and uh, the SRA team, I'm very pleased to provide you with some of the highlights um, that we've achieved uh, in the 2021 financial year. Um, I think it's fair to say that 2021 has been a significant year for us all, a year of change and transition at a scale that probably hasn't been seen since we were formed about eight years ago. It's a transformation that was born from genuine consultation with our industry and one that was necessary to ensure that SRA both remain financially sustainable and able to drive our research outcomes for the future. Since May, we have reorganised our structure and our new strategy has been now approved by government. Our focus now is on implementation. Our district managers are on the ground uh, and they're getting some good traction, but we all know that there's more work to be done. Our research continues to focus on key areas for industry. And I'd like to talk a little bit about two really important areas of research. Firstly, in terms of our biosecurity uh, environmental threats. Uh, imidacloprid, the current um, treatment for cane grubs, is at risk of being withdrawn from the industry and SRA at a cost of uh, approximately 50 million. And SRA is focusing, focusing heavily on researching a replacement product for imidacloprid. This is really important research work. It's going to cost us about a million dollars over the coming years and, and we welcome uh, the contribution from QDAF uh, of approximately 50% of those funds. We've also taken, uh, undertaken um, a risk assessment recently on our biosecurity threats and uh, refocused our efforts to not only focus on today's threats, but to prepare for the threats that undoubtedly will come across our borders at some stage. Uh, we know that for every dollar we spend in SRA on incursion control, almost $85 of economic value is created through avoided losses for the industry. And we've continued to work on our variety efforts and released five new sugarcane varieties this year. Another highlight was the strong collaboration and partnership established through the Sugarcane Industry Leadership Forum. We're proud to be working with the representatives of our, of our um, representative organisations. And we've secured funding from the CRC for Northern Australia for our very first whole of industry collaborative sugarcane industry roadmap. This roadmap's about generational change and positioning our industry to take those steps today that we need to take to position us for the future. Uh, to this end, SRA is also supporting some very interesting feasibility studies into new opp opportunities for sugarcane, such as compostable plastics derived from sugarcane juice and the potential for oil canes. These opportunities are being assessed at feasibility study level because we know that not only does the science need to stack up, so does the economics. Over the past year, SRA has had two major internal goals. Most importantly, to improve our safety performance and secondly, to improve our financial performance. Pleasingly, on the safety front, we've seen an 18% improvement in rolling average TRIFA. However, in a small organisation like this, we know that these numbers move around a fair bit. What is more pleasing for the team is our progress against our safety improvement plan, and which we've seen uh, us build some sophistication in our safety systems, but most importantly, uh, start to embed a learning culture for safety across the organisation. On the financial front, we have focused a lot on managing cost, and this has been necessary for our sustainability. But I'd like to point out that uh, cost cutting is limiting and we can only go so far before we erode our ability to add value for the industry. The coming year has to be about us growing value. We have our new strategic direction and, cho and having chosen this direction with the board, uh, our job now is to quote Jack Welsh, to implement it like hell 
and that's what we'll be doing in the coming year. In closing, I want to acknowledge the efforts of our people at SRA during what was and has been a challenging year. I'd like to also acknowledge the input from the industry, our investors and the research community who've worked with, with us throughout this period. In particular, I personally would like to acknowledge our industry association CEOs. I've enjoyed working with you all and I'm excited about what we can achieve in the coming years together. I'd also like to thank our SRA board for their valued strategic leadership and advice, including departing directors Lee Blackburn, whose term ended in late July, and Dr Guy Roth, who's played a valuable role for more than five years on our research funding panel. Thanks all also for the unwavering support and contribution of our outgoing chairperson, Dr Ron Swindells. Ron has had a long and distinguished career in this industry and I personally have been and I know the SRA team have been blessed to benefit from his experience and counsel since the inception of SRA. Ron, we wish you well for your retirement. Finally, I look forward to working with our new board, our people and with all of you uh, to drive outcomes needed to ensure a vibrant, successful future for our industry for years to come. Thank you. Thank you, Roz, and thank you for your kind words. I now refer to the notice of meeting dated 24th of September 2021 circulated to members that sets out the business proposed for today's meeting. I will take the notice of meeting as read and address, address each of the items and their associated motions in the sequence they are listed in the notice. As stated in the proxy form circulated to members as chair of this meeting, I intend to vote open undirected proxies in favour of the resolutions. Now move to item one. The first item of business on the notice of meeting is the receipt and consideration of the financial statements and the report of directors and the auditor for the financial year ending 30 June 2021. A resolution is not required to be passed on this item. The relevant reports are included in SRA's 2020-2021 annual report. I commend that report to you. As no resolution is required, I now move to item two. The second item of business is the receipt and consideration of the Director Selection Committee report dated the 17th of August 2021. A resolution is not required to be passed on this item. As required under the SRA Constitution, the independent chair of the Director Selection Committee, Ms Liz Alexander, has authorised me to table the Director Selection Committee report dated 17th of August 2021 and I'm advised that Liz is logged into this meeting. The Director Selection Committee report made the following recommendations in respect of board nominations. One, Ms Rowena McNally, Director and Chair, term of three years. Two, Mr Mark Day, term of three years. Three, Mr Raleigh Winton, term of three years. Is there anyone wishing to ask a question on the Director Selection Committee report? No questions coming. As no resolution is required, I now move to item three. The third item of business is now the actual election of directors. Exciting times. Three director positions were open for selection in 2021. The Director Selection Committee conducted a recruitment process to identify three directors, which resulted in the nomination of Ms Rowena McNally, Mr Mark Day, and Mr Riley Winton for election as directors of SRA. Their qualifications and experience were provided in the notice of meeting. So the first resolution, 3A. I now move that in accordance with rule 28.1 of SRA's constitution, Ms Rowena McNally, who has been recommended by the Director Selection Committee and is eligible for election, be elected as a director of SRA for a term of three years. The subject is now open for questions. 
by members. Does anyone have a question on the election of Rowena? Not on the line, I now advise you that the proxy votes received for item 3A are detailed on the screen. Resolution 3B. I now move that in accordance with Rule 28.1 of SRA's Constitution, Mr Mark Day, who has been recommended by the Director Selection Committee and is eligible for election, be elected as a Director of SRA for a term of three years. Subject is open for questions by members. Is there anyone wishing to ask a question about the election of Mark? No questions. I advise you that the proxy votes received for item 3B are as detailed on the screen. Resolution 3C. I now move that in accordance with Rule 28.1 of SRA's Constitution, Mr Rowley Winton, who has been recommended by the Director Selection Committee and is eligible for election, be elected as a Director of SRA for a term of three years. Subject is now open for question by members. Is there anyone now wishing to ask a question about the election of Rowley? No questions. I can now advise you the proxy votes received for item 3C are as detailed on the screen. The fourth item of business is the appointment of a new auditor. BDO Audit Proprietary Limited has been the company's external auditor since 2016. Pursuant to Rule 41 of the SRA Constitution, SRA must not engage an auditor for a period that exceeds five years, and therefore a new auditor is to be appointed commencing financial year 21-22. The company has conducted a competitive tender process in respect of the external audit function. Following the conclusion of the process, Pitcher Partners was selected as the preferred external auditor of the company for the financial year beginning 1 July 2021, subject to shareholder approval of the appointment at this meeting. Section 327B of the Corporations Act 2001 requires the company to obtain shareholder approval by ordinary resolution for the appointment of Pitcher Partners as the new auditor of the company. BDO Audit has applied to ASIC for its consent to their resignation at, as auditor of the company. As required by the Corporations Act 2001, ASIC has consented to the retirement of BDO Audit as the auditor of the company. The subject is now open for question by members. Is there anyone now wishing to ask a question about the appointment of the new auditor? I advise you that the proxy votes received for item four are as detailed on the screen. Kim Collier, I thank you very much for the work you have done for SRA over the past five years. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our discussion on the items of business. In a couple of minutes, I will close the voting system. Please ensure that you have cast your vote on all resolutions. I'll now pause to allow you time to finalise these votes.
voting is now closed. The provisional results of voting will now be displayed on the following four screens. These indicate that the resolution is passed. I congratulate Rowena, Mark and Rolly on their appointment. I'd now like to call on Ms Rowena McNally as Chair-elect to make some brief remarks. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Ron. And they will be brief. Well, I have plenty of time to get sick of the sound of my voice in due course. Um, so firstly, of course, I'm very honoured to take on the role. So thank you very much. And I'm very much looking forward to working with the SRA board and staff. Uh, and congratulations, of course, to Mark, who I, I recall from the old days, um, and also to Rolly for their appointment. Um, just for those of you who are um, in, the, in the industry particularly, um, Ros Baker, the, our CEO, will, and is, is taking me on a tour of the industry between now and um, hopefully Christmas. So I'm looking forward to um, catching up with uh, some of the old faces, I hope, and um, meeting a number of new people as we work, um, work through our tour and meet with members and other stakeholders. Um, but just, uh, I think, again, and just to formally record um, our thanks to outgoing um, directors, Guy Roth and Lee Blackburn, um, and also particularly uh, to, you, to you, Ron. Um, I must say it's a bit uh, interesting. I think I haven't seen Ron it would be over 10 years and... I think he's doing a Dorian Gray because I think you look exactly the same as um, I last saw you, Ron. So whatever you're doing, SRA must be um, very good for you. Uh, I know there are a lot of challenges there um, and for our members particularly, um, Ros and I are very much looking forward to meeting with you um, and hearing your views on how those challenges are going to be addressed over the next year or two. So thank you all very much again. Um, Ron, congratulations for your period of um, terrific chairing. Um, and thank you very much to the board and, and all the members. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Rowena, and all the very best for the future. Okay, before closing this AGM, I would like to acknowledge the contribution that a number of people have made to SRA. Firstly, to our two non-continuing directors. Dr Guy Roth, is a distinguished scientist who has served SRA well for a period of six years. His expertise in irrigation, soil, farming systems and natural resource management has been beneficial to both SRA and our industry. He has served also as the SRA Director on the Research Funding Panel. Guy's contribution to SRA has been a valuable one and I thank him for his enthusiasm and his passion and also for supplying some lovely cherries in non-COVID times for our December board meeting. Lee Blackburn. Lee served on the board for just under two years. Lee is a very accomplished grower and director. His input around the board table was always considered and always was focused on the greater good of the industry as a whole. Thank you, Lee. I'd also like to acknowledge the contribution of Gary Longdon to SRA. Gary was appointed to the research funding panel in 2015 and was made chair in 2018. He retired from this position at the end of June this year 
and I sincerely thank him for his service. I'd like to thank our CEO, Ros Baker, for her outstanding efforts since joining our organisation. A special thanks also to our company secretary, Michael Shannon, for his guidance and assistance. And on behalf of the board, I'd like to thank all of our staff for their continuing efforts. Finally, I'd like to thank my fellow directors for their collegiality and invaluable input at board meetings. Thanks also to industry stakeholders, fellow research institutions and relevant government officials for their support and assistance to SRA. I already said this once today, but I'm going to say it again. It's been a privilege to serve as SRA's chair for the past six years and as a director since the formation of SRA. SRA has evolved considerably from the organisation put before the initial board back in 2013. It must and will continue to evolve and implement its new vision. As Steve Jobs said, if you're working on something you really care about, you don't have to be pushed. The vision pulls you. Well, our new vision is pulling us. However, as Roz said, the board is well aware that vision without execution is hallucination. And this year's operating plan is firmly focused on strategy execution. I'd like to thank those people who have contact me, contacted me with their best wishes. I very much appreciate your sentiments. May I wish you all good weather, good prices and good health for the future. And I now declare this meeting closed. Thank you. <laughs>